um, I just have this memory. I, I was with Paul and maybe Temple and it was icy and it was kind of snowing. And I just, and, and somebody said, did you see that kid do a backflip off, off this cat track? And I mean, it's hard out, right? And we get off the chair and we kind of loop around and there's just like, it's almost like a pack of dogs, like descending the mountain as fast as you can, you know? And we, we circle around, it's just icy, right? We circle around and, and we see him at the chair, you know, and it's Jamie and Paws and Dylan and, and uh, Demetrius and, and all these dudes. And I don't know if Paul was with him or not, but, but it didn't matter if it was hard or not. The guys just absolutely attacked it and it was fun to go snowboard at night. And, those guys, they just charged. He was at the West Beach contest in Whistler in 90, and that was when I first saw him. And he was, at that point, kind of one of those uh, riders who came up from Washington State, and there were like, you know, quite a, a pretty big contingent of those guys. Uh, but he stood out because he was just like chucking, chucking his meat off this jump, and no gloves back then. Like it was, it was his signature back then. So he had this, a couple of things that made everybody notice. And then I remember by the next time I saw him ride, um, he had started to just land all of those big chunks. He had a really unique style. And at the time it was like, people were saying, oh, he's really stink bug or whatever, because you know, Craig's style dominated uh, snowboarding style at that point. And Jamie's was really different. Everyone else kind of was trying to emulate the, the masters of the day and he was doing his own thing. I reflect back to my early days of skateboarding um, the skateboarders that I looked up to were characters like Mark Gonzalez and Neil Blender. And those guys always had a creative sense to them above and beyond just their ability to apply that to skateboarding. I always felt like if I had an opportunity in a professional career with snowboarding, it's definitely there's qualities and attributes I wanted to emulate just out of the inspir inspiration that I got from the guys that I looked up to as a youth. That's where I met Jamie. I met him with TK, getting on the chairlift. TK pointed him out and said, keep an eye on that kid, he's good. Later on that day, I said, hey, if you, if you need any outerwear, here's my phone number, you know, give me a call. You know, I introduced myself and all that. And, and um, I got a call from him one day and he goes, hey, if that offer's still good, you know, um, would love would love to get some of your swag. First time I met Jamie was probably 94, uh, shortly after Roadkill. You know, somebody like Jamie comes in that's already at that stage was a legend. I don't I hate that word legend, but he was he was a hero to people, you know, in snowboarding. You know, Jamie has a wonderful thing with his energy. It's very calming. Um, you know, he kind of puts people at ease when when they're around him. And that's kind of how I met him. Uh, I was just in the middle of that really vibrant time in snowboarding when we were all kind of coming together and we're all riding this wave of excitement. Uh, Jamie was dating Circe Wallace at the time and Matt was dating this girl Ingrid. And the four of them just used to spend a lot of time traveling around. Matt had an old 1970 VW bus. They were just living the idyllic Northwest lifestyle, you know, skating, snowboarding, surfing, um, camping, playing music, hanging out with their dogs. They had a really strong history, like a lot of the North, like the Washington, Mervyn, Northwest community did, right? There was, there was an incredible bond in that whole community uh, of the Northwest riders, the, the Mount Baker crew, the Alpental crew. Those guys were all integral parts of it, especially early on in the Mervyn days. You know, Baker was already pretty well established with the um, Craig and Dano and Carter and the MBHC, which were like a generation ahead of us. Baker was the only place you could ride with in those days. And then as our generation started to come on, Hayak was opening up, Snoqualmie was just about to open. And uh, that Hayak scene with, with Ranquit kind of being, you know, a real snowboarder there. And then the Northwest Snowboards guys, Matt and uh, Jay Rhoda, Paul Farrell, um, all of those guys that eventually then were bringing up Jamie and Temple and kind of that next generation. That, that was, there was so much of the formative, uh, like, center for that Northwest scene. It, uh, that, it was a really cool time. When Jamie and I first got together, 
he was like this hardcore crystal mountain local and was kind of anti-baker for some reason like he was really resistant he didn't like the drive or i don't know you know he i don't think he really liked the scene to be honest like it wasn't his scene it was mine and so i had to like kind of kidnap him and get him to baker and i think at one point like Loeb said something like you know he's all brawn no brains or something because he would just throw himself off stuff and he could just ride out of anything. Jamie kind of came in to that scene later and um, I'm sure he would have ended up there with or without me, but I think he fell in love with the mountain, you know, through my insistence that that's where we spend our weekends. As a child of, you know, the 70s skating and surfing, I grew up with style and um, all the people that I always gravitated towards were people that were styled. More than the tricks, it was the style. And Jamie was smooth, you know. That was, that, that, you know, people weren't quite doing tricks. It was kind of airs in, in the way you rode. That's what kind of stood out. So that's the, my first impression of Jamie Lynn was how fluid he looked, how smooth as butter, you know. Going way back to when GNU kind of got shut down and, and LibTech started. Um, early on, I had a board with LibTech and he wrote it and, and he really put, um, you know, my stuff on the map and he really put LibTech on the map, you know, in, in a huge way, he, like world, worldwide um, influence, you know, and just in freestyle snowboarding, you I mean, he took it over for darn close to a decade, really. Um, with everything he was doing. It's been a great ride to just to just watch it all go down and everybody's riding powder now. <laughs>